for torturing. Yeah. And it is correct that the um, your torture in the car was just a prelude of what was to happen um, later on. Exactly. Um, kindly tell us uh, what happened after you were interrogated by the panel. What happened next? What happened next was that Baba Sako instructed them, me, them to take me back to mile two. And who took you back to mile two and what happened um, during the journey to mile two? That is the, the same black, black boys, the arresting team. And uh, on our way going, that's also where they, were, they started beating me up with it, until we reached at mile two. What were they using to beat you? They have this black plastic, yes, black plastic, is it, uh, pipe. Some of them have their, these daggers, ropes, and all kind of things. They wear arms with all kind of things. So, but definitely what they were beating me was with this black pipe, the hard one. You mentioned, um, you mentioned a blind guy when, when you were at the um, NIA premises. He was the close friend of yours who was brought out and um, bleeding and had been tortured and he made um, false allegations against you, which you said was because he was actually forced to do so um, after being tortured. Um, did you go back with him on that day? We went back in the same car to the NIA, to the, back to the prison, sorry. Sorry, did you say he went back with you? Yes. Did he go back in with you car. in the same vehicle? In the same car, yeah. And what happened when you got to mile two? When we got to mile two, we were, each was thrown in a cell and locked up there. And this was um, when he explained um, to you that he had been tortured prior to him being um, brought out at the inter interrogation room at NIA. Is that correct? Yes. I did ask him. Because I said, boy, why should you do this? Why should you say so? He said, if I don't say it, they will kill me. Tell us uh, what happened next after that. Yes, this was on the second day, on the 29th of March, around 11 p.m. Again, this team of torturers came to collect me from mile two and uh, ask me that I am wanted at the NIA again. Is it the same team of uh, black, black boys? Yes, that is the same team of black, black boys, comprised of Tumbultamba. This time, Tumbultamba was part of them, was the head. Who was Tumbultamba? Tumbultamba was also a state guard officer attached to, with the state guard personnel at the NIA. At the, Sent at the, at the president's office. And he was part of the Black Black Boys? Yes. At this point, did he appear, um, I mean, what position did he appear to have within the Black Black Boys? No, Tumbul, Tumbul was the one supervising the torture when they were torturing us. He was the one supervising on that day. So he was he leading them, them command. on that day? Yes. Please proceed, tell us um, how you got to um, the NIA and what happened when you got there. Okay, when I arrived at the NIA, again, the panel told me that you need to, er to write your statement. That, is, that was on the 29th of March. Yes, around 11 p.m. They said, write the statement, write all what you know about the coup. Yes, so I don't write anything. They said, then let me go with Lamin Cham, Sergeant Lamin Cham, to get my statement. I went with Sergeant Lamin Cham to a small room within that conference room. He was getting my statement, asking me my involvement in the coup plot. I said, nothing. I don't know nothing about it. Yes, then that's where he went again out and told the panel, he is not complying. 
I was sitting there alone. After some times, Ismail Ajame came, came with a statement. He said, I should sign that statement. I said, no, this is not my statement. I cannot sign it. He said, you have to sign it or I cut your hand. He was having his bayonet then. I refused to sign the statement. He just took the bayonet and, and, and stabbed me on my right hand at my elbow. He said, if you don't sign it, I will cut your hand. Yes. And did you sign it? The statement was never signed. Did he um, go through with his threat to cut your hand with the bayonet? Yes, that was the time they hand me over with the junglers, the black, black boys. They said, let me go downstairs. I went downstairs. I was handcuffed, made to kneel, kneel down on the concrete floor. My head was covered with a black plastic bag and a very cool bucket of water was poured on my body all over. Then they start beating me. The, the beating went to an interval of about 30 minutes because they will beat and stop and start excelling again. So this is how things went there. Can you tell us um, where you were taken to um, within the premises of the NIA? Please describe the exact uh, location. Yes, this was behind an old building near to Bombadinka. But within that uh, area, you have flower, flowers all over. And uh, inside, you have a concrete floor, a round concrete floor. That's where they said, Natok Turu. It's a nickname, Natok Turu. Tell him to tell the truth. That is Natok Turu, they call the place. That, that's where they take me. Thank you. Um, I just want to take you a little bit back. When, uh, when Sergeant Lamincham was taking your statement, you mentioned that he went back to the panel and told them that you were not being compliant. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, when you just testified, um, you did not inform us that the panel was around on that particular day or that you were taken before the panel. Can you please clarify that point? Were you taken there or do you know whether the panel was present on that day at the NIA premises? Yes, I was taken up at the panel upstairs. The panel, panel were there throughout the investigation. And can you tell us what your interactions was with the panel on that day? Was not friendly. Did they interrogate you again? Yes, they did interrogate me. I refused to talk. That's the time they hand me over to the junglers downstairs. Can you tell and us whether... those people... My apologies, please proceed. That's the time the junglers started dealing with me downstairs. They beat for a period of 30 minutes. They took me upstairs again, said, go, go and tell them what you know about this school. Otherwise, you will come back here again. Can you just confirm um, who was present this time around? Was it the same um, group of people you mentioned um, the first night at the NIA, or was there any difference in the membership of the panel and those who were also on the long bench? No, it was a different sister forces because I can recognize they are the police, the NIA, and personnel of the Gambia National Army. They were mixed up there. What, are, what about the people that were there previously? Um, were they still there? Was Fode Barry still there? Was he leading the panel? Yes, these all were NIA officers leading the panel, yeah. What about Lang Tombong Tamba? Was he present? Yes. Momodo Haidara? Was present, yeah. Alaji Martin? Was present. Usman Sonko? Was present. Yes, so my question is whether the same people from the previous day were present on the second day. Can you confirm this to us? Uh, for this first day, I did 
see, I saw them, but the second day, I saw only Tumbul Tamba. But the first day, when Alaji Martin was slapping me, they were both sitting there. And um, you said that this panel, um, after you were tortured, that you were brought back to the panel and you were forced to say something, to make a confession, and you refused, and they took you back again downstairs for further beating. Is that correct? Yes. So it is correct that at all times, the panel in its um, entirety and individual members of the panel knew that you were actually being tortured by the um, black, black boys. Oh, yes, obviously, yes, yes. Please tell us, um, give us more details about how you were actually tortured, what was used, and um, who actually tortured you. You mentioned that um, Tumbul Tamba was actually leading the torturing, but did you recognize any individual members of the junglers who actually tortured you and what they did to you? Yes, the torturers. My torturers were Tumbul Tamba, Captain Musa Jamme, Michael Sankoria, uh, Malik Jata, Ismail Jamme, and Bora Koli. This I can recognize. At this point, who was the director of the NIA? Uh, there was a power vacuum at the NIA by then because Daba Marina was the director of NIA and Daba was arrested. So now there was a big infighting between Hari Sambu, uh, Momotu Haidara, and the other people. Each of them was trying to be recommended as director, coming to be director. But you mentioned that Momotu Haidara was actually on the panel of interrogators. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Was Hari Sambu there? No, I don't see him. Okay. And where was Daba Marena at this point? You mentioned that he was arrested. Um, do you know if he was detained? And if so, where? At mile two. Did you, do you know where he was detained um, at mile two? Daba was at the maximum security cell number five. When you enter maximum security number five, the first row, for second cell, he was there. And that was where you were being detained, is that correct? Exactly. Did you have any interactions with him whilst you were being detained at the maximum security wing number five? Anyway, I think by then he was unconscious because I did talk to him, but he never listened. He never answered to me. He was just looking the the ceiling upstairs. He don't even listen to me, he look at me. What condition did he appear to be in um, when you saw him? Was also tortured, seriously. Can we um, go back to your torture? Um, I, had, I had previously asked you just to give us further explanations um, about your actual torture and who did what to you and what they did to you. Okay, as I said, I was escorted downstairs. When we arrived at the torturing chamber, they did say to me, kneel down on the concrete floor. I knelt down with handcuffs. Some of the soldiers brought this plastic bag, black one, put on my head, cover my head, somebody holding it. And uh, I can remember a full bucket of water, very cold water, was poured on me. And uh, then the beating start. When they beat for some times, I will hear the voice of Musa Jame telling them, hey, alabula, alabula, that is, hey, stop it, stop it. Then he said, honorable, come, tell me, what do you know about this? Then I will not respond to him. And uh, he will again tell them, come and get him. And who was this Musa Jame? Musa Jame was the PPO as president office. And he was the Musa Jame that you earlier mentioned in your testimony? Yes, commonly known as Mali Mungu. Apart from, apart from your own personal torture, did you witness any other 
to watch your at the NIA um, to, to other people? Did yeah. you witness other yes. people being tortured? Yes. I did witness the torturing of Omar Fall. I did witness the torturing of Mustafa Lo, the torturing of Ali Lo, the torturing of Ustas Usman C, the torturing of Lai Conte, the former KMC Mayo, the torturing of who else again was there? Yes, Amadiso. Amadiso also. I did witness that. Yeah. I saw all of them being tortured there at the NIA. You also mentioned um, other National Assembly members that um, had been arrested, um, detained um, at mile two, and who were also previously tortured when you saw them. Um, did you see them again at the NIA, people like uh, Ramzi Diab, people like Mustafa Adiba, and um, another member of parliament that you mentioned, three of them. Did you see them again? Yes. Omar Baru Kamara also was seriously beaten. After just my beating, that was Omar next. Omar Baru Kamara. Then Ramzi Adiab, I saw Tumbul Tamba instructing the boys to pour water on him, then he will hold the hair of Ramsey Diab, put inside the barrel of water for some times, and remove the head. This, this I can I can tell you, I saw it at the NIA. Tumbul Tamba was doing this to Ramsey Diab. Then Sirif Diba also came after they tortured Per P J Mendy, Captain Per P J Mendy. Sirif Diba was the next guy. That is Sirif Mustafa Diba. Can you please repeat what they did to Mustafa Adiba? They did beat him very seriously. Slapping him. I saw they kicked the old dad, the old old man. He, he fell down. It was very sad, definitely. And then the beating start also. What about Umar Ubaro? Umar also was beaten. Shouting on top of his voice, Woi Alben Fala, Alben Fala, I have done operation. This is what he was saying. Can you please tell us what that means in English? That is, he was shouting on top of his voice, You are going to kill me, you are going to kill me. I have just done operation. All my body is inserted with ions. Be careful. This is what he was saying, telling them. You also mentioned um, other people, um, Omar Ba. Can you tell us what happened to Omar Ba? Which Omar Ba? Did you mention Omar Fall? Omar, Omar Fall, yes. Yes. I did, I did, I did saw Omar Fall, Ismail Jame, wanted, was having, he, he told Omar Fall, your, your leg, put it on top of this block. So Omar Fall put the leg on the block. He wanted to cut his leg. Secondly, also, he just bring, br brought his dagger and hold the bath of Omar Fall Keta. He, he cut everything. This I can witness. It's so just that we are um, clear, you mentioned Omar Fall and not Omar Ba. Is that correct? Yeah, it's Omar Fall. Omar Fall. Yes. Can you please re repeat what happened um, to Omar Fall, please? Omar Fall, Ismaila Jame was the one torturing him. Ismaila told him, let me have your legs. He put his leg on top of a block there, on a block. Then he wanted to cut the leg of Omar Fall. Omar just rose and removed his leg. Then he came again, hold his back, and uh, cut it with his knife. Yes. His back was cut with a knife? Yes. And what happened um, when that was done? Yes, he was taken upstairs to the panel. 
to go and explain what what he have done during the coup plot. What about Mustafa Lo and Ali Lo? What happened to them? They were all beaten. I, I found Mustafa Lo lying on the conference center. He was beaten until he flat. He was lying on the conference center. By then he was already beaten. And that is where the panel was, panel members. Were they present when this happened? Exactly, yes. They were present. What about Usman C? Usman C also, they did beat him. That's Ustas um, Omar C. Ustas Usman C, yes. Usman C. My apologies. Yeah, yes. Usman C. Yes. Lai Conte? Lai also all beat him. What about Amadisou? Amadisou, the same thing. Everybody was beaten. The only guys that I saw who was not beaten was, sorry, I must make this rectification. I saw the present speaker there, but I don't see her beaten. And uh, former the present lawyer, Antoman Gay, also, I meet, her, meet him there. But I don't see him beaten. Um, who was Antoman Gay? He is also a lawyer in the Gambia. And the present speaker, can you please give us uh, the name, please? That is Mariam Dentin Jab. So both of these people were present uh, at the NIA, but you did not see them they, being beaten? No, no, no. But then I saw them at the conference room for, on interrogation, definitely. Do you know if they had been detained at that point and where, if you do know? No, I don't know. I don't definitely know. I just saw them at the conference center. They're sitting on a, 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 on a chair waiting. Okay. And um, you can confirm that the torture of all the people that you've mentioned here today was done by the black, black boys. Is yes. Correct? Yes. I can confirm to that. And they were being led on that occasion by Tumbul Tamba. Yes. But then it's not only Tumbul Tamba. The torturers were groups. When this group come, they will torture and they go and bring another person. The other group also will come and torture you. There were many. Yeah, can you just tell us who else you remember or recognize apart from Tumbul Tamba? Malik Manga was part of them. Suleiman Baji. Suleiman Baji. Suleiman Baji. Nuha Baji. Sana Manjang. These people, uh, and Pamalik Jata, the brother of Babukar Jata. Pamalik Jata. They were all part of it, yes. Pamalik Jata, yeah. Do you know where um, Alaji Martin was at this point? No, on the second day, I don't know where he was, definitely. Okay. So after you were tortured and you saw all of these people um, tortured, what happened next? What happened next, we were all bundled in a car, in the cars and brought back to mile two again. And they came to collect other people also. That was a routine. The whole and day, you, the, continue, the whole day was a continued torturing of detainees. And you were returned back to the maximum security wing number five? Yes. And you said they collected other people and took them to the NIA, is that correct? Yes, but that was around... Cell number four, I think, where Tamsir Jase and Ali Job were. Please repeat the names. Ali Job and who? Tamsir Jase. And Tamsir Jase, yes. Okay. Ali Job was the former accountant general. Tamsir Jase was the former director general of immigration. And um, you can confirm that they were taken to the NIA, is that correct? Yes, definitely, I can confirm to that. And can you tell us how you know this? Because when they called them, I had their name being called. The list was called. Officer Tal, where is the... Biden Tal was the officer. They asked for Officer Tal, where is the cell for Tamsir Jasse and Ali Job and other people? They're calling names. And was Officer Tal a prison officer or a military officer? Yes. He was the one at the main gate registering detainees going in and out of the prison. 
Um, were you present when Tamsir Jassi and Ali Ujib were brought were brought back? No, I was not present. Do you know what happened to them after they went to the NIA? Definitely, I would not know. Okay. Um, you've mentioned, um, you know, all of you people um, who were actually arrested and detained for being involved in the coup attempt. Um, what happened to, to Noor Cham? Do you know what happened to him? He was alleged to have been the ringleader. And um, there, was, there were reports that he was actually, um, he had actually absconded. And they were looking for him. Do you know what happened to him eventually? Do you know if he was ever caught? No, Noor Cham was at large. He was never seen. And uh, during my, my asylum in Senegal, I did saw him once in chess. So he managed to escape? Yes. Kindly tell us what happened after you saw um, Aliu Job and Tamsir Jassi taken to NIA. What happened next at mile two? Anyway, they were brought back, but I know the following day, the way I saw them, they were not working normal. So I have the belief that they were tortured also. Because the way they, how they were working, there was a problem. Um, let's just seek some clarification because you just told us that um, you actually hadn't seen them before. That was the you... first day. When that was the first day. Okay. So when did you subsequently see them and assume they the had second been captured? The second day we were all taken together. Very well. So tell us what yes. happened after that second day when you had been tortured together with all these other people you mentioned. What happened next? They brought her back to mile two, central prison. And did you spend the day at mile two on that day? Did you spend the night there? Yes. Yes, we how, did how, spend the night there. How long did you, how long were you detained um, at mile two? Uh, I was detained there for one year, nine months. And after you were tortured on this particular day, um, were you tortured on any other day subsequent to that day? Yes, any day uh, when they take somebody else and uh, he happened to mention your name, they come and collect you and again confront you with the individual and torture you. That, is, that was how they do it. Can you tell us if you remember how, on how many occasions um, they came to collect you from mile two? I was tortured on two occasions. You were tortured on two occasions? Yes. And um, is the first occasion you mentioned um, the occasion which you have just narrated to us in your testimony? Yes. Can we hear you um, clearly, Mr. Witness? Was that the yes. first occasion you were tortured? Yes, I said yes. Okay, can you tell us um, the other occasion that you've mentioned? What happened on that particular occasion? No, the other occasion, was about the statement I, I, I refused to sign. They, they collected me again, took me. Then they say, why should I not sign the statement? I say, it's not my statement. And again, the beating start. The beating started there. They said, I have to sign the statement. So definitely, the way I did it, I knew I was going to court and that this statement will be tendered. So I refused to put my normal signature. The signature in my ID card, I, I did another signature, forged signature. And uh, during the trial, this is what saved me. And can you tell us um, what the time period was between the first torture and um, your second torture? It was, it is always at late night because the first one was 1.30 p.m. we were taking. The second one was 11. They collected us from mile two. Yes, my question but was the, not uh, the time of the torture, but the period of time between your first torture and your second torture. How many days passed it, or how many weeks passed? It was one day in between. It was one day in between, definitely. Okay. So you were tortured the first day, and then the next day you were taken and tortured again. Yes. All right. 
Um, apart from the detainees that you mentioned at mile two uh, prisons, maximum security wing number five, who were detained with you, whilst you were being detained there, um, did any other detainees subsequently join you? Yes, on the 6th of April, we saw Ablai Kujabi was brought, for the body was brought, Baba Saho, Kemo, Balaj, Kemo Fatajo, no, Kemo Balajo, sorry, and uh, God Seka. These people were abroad. And um, who were these people? These people also were part of the panel of the NIA investigators. That's why I confronted for the body. Then for they said to me, "Look, you people are not so, you are so, not supposed to be here." According to my recommendation, what I did was, you are supposed to go home. Like Conte is supposed to go home. Ablaijai was supposed to be released, and uh, Ramsey, uh, Uncle Diab, and Honorable MC Cham. All you people, I recommended to the president you to be released. But when I took the, my file there. The person underlined your name, he said, no, you are not going. Then they will not go. Ablanjai will not go. And Hamadiso will not go. But the rest were released. Are you saying that uh, the same panel of investigators that were investigating you and interrogating you also ended up at mile two at the maximum security wing number five, um, just like you? Yes. Yes. And you're saying, um, can you tell us what the reason was? What was the reason behind their arrest and subsequent uh, detention? The reason was this. For the body did tell us, told us, sorry, that when he put up recommendation that we should be removed, we should be released and be used as state witnesses, I think that does not go well with Musa Jame. Musa Jame went to the president and told him, you see, for the body and other people are sympathizing of these couple plotters. This is how we are jamming order their arrest. And um, what happened when they joined you there um, at Mile Two Prisons? What happened next? Yes, that was how we started collecting information from them. What and what happened during the interrogation? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? So. Some of them were confronted very seriously. As a result, some of them were moved to different cells because we cannot be with them at the same building. And we were confronting them very seriously. Do you know what subsequently happened uh, to Daba Marena? Oh, yeah. Daba Marena was collected there at one night. Daba Marena, Lieutenant Ibulo, RSM Alpha Bar and left on Ali, Ali, Ali Sise. These people were collected there one night under the leadership of Tumbul Tamba towards the NIA headquarters. But since then, they were never come back. In the following morning, we heard that these people were, were being transported to Janjambure prison and they had an accident on their way. And um, did you receive any other information subsequently about what happened um, to these people that you mentioned? Yeah, the information was that th these people were killed by the junglers. They were taken and killed. This was the information we received. And you have already confirmed to us um, through your experience that Tumbul Tamba, who led them out um, from mile two, was one of the leaders of the junglers, the assassination um, team. Yes. Yes, that's right, Kansu. And subsequently they disappeared in his custody. Exactly. Yes. Please tell us um, what happened next um, at mile two. Did anything of significance happen whilst you were detained? Were you ever charged with any particular offense um, and taken to court? Yes. After some time, I can say after three weeks, they came, the police came to the prison with some intelligent agents, including 
Fali Jabang, who was then military intelligence officer at State House. I forget to mention Fali Jabang also was part of the panel. Thank you. So they came they came to the prison and uh, brought us outside. We were taken to the reception room and uh, as a result we were charged. But first I was not charged. I went back to my cell and waited. After three hours they came, Lamin Cham and the others came and said Musa Jami said they should charge me. Can you give us uh, the particulars of what you were charged with, what offense you were charged with? I was charged for treason and conspiracy. Can you please re repeat the charges? Treason, charge one, conspiracy, charge two. Treason and conspiracy? Yes. <coughs> Sorry, would that be um, conspiracy to treason? Exactly, conspiracy to commit treason, yeah. Okay, and uh, were you charged with any other people? Yes, we were all charged together, all those detainees inside there. Apart from like Conte, Honorable MC Cham, Honorable Omar Baru Kamara, and uh, Uncle Diab, these people were released. And Honorable, yes, this, Ramsey, Ramsey Diab, they were all released and we went home. Can you tell us how many of you were charged? And if possible, just repeat the names of those who were charged with you, if you can remember. Yes, in the side of the army, can you write? I can say Captain Bunja Dabo, Captain Yaya YM Dabo, Captain Per PJ Mendy, Captain Wasa Kamara, Second Lieutenant Farin Sanya, Lance Corporal Sambaba, Corporal Babu Janga, and uh, Alaji Nying, Mot Aliuba, Second Lieutenant. These military officers were charged. In the civilian side, I myself was charged, Ali Job was charged. Uh, Omar, Fa Omar Fall was charged, and uh, yeah, we were the four civilian charged. And um, do you have any record of um, or information of these charges and um, the fact that you actually went to court? Was it reported anywhere? Say it again. Was it reported in the media? Um, that you were taken to court and charged with these offenses? Exactly. It was reported in the media, yes, and I said all over the radio. Yeah. Do you, do you have a record of it? To. Do you have a copy of the newspaper that it was reported on? Yes. A copy of the newspaper is there on Observer and the Point and Foria. They all publish it. Do you have a particular um, paper that it was reported on that you had in your custody? A particular paper? Yes, particular newspaper. No, the newspapers I have was that during the trial, at the end of the trial, when I was acute and discharged, and others were jailed. These are the records I have. Okay. Have you provided this to the commission? Yes, Madam Counsel, I have done that. Thank you, Mr. Witness. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, we would like to um, include in the record a copy of the Observer newspaper dated Friday, the 10th of August, 2007, um, showing um, the witness being charged and taken to court. Request granted. The exhibit number is 0054. Thank you. Kindly tell us what happened after you were charged and taken to court.
Sorry, Mr. Witness. Please carry on and just tell us um, what happened after you were charged and taken to court. After we are, we are charged and taken to court, both civilian and military, we were all taken to the high court. In the interim, we were given a judge that is Justice Ajim. And uh, we all know the record of Justice Ajim with Yaya Jame. They were so close friends. When we heard of that, our lawyers tell us that then we said no. We protest. We say we are not going to be persecuted by Justice Ajim. We prefer another judge. And uh, we were taken back to prison, stay for some time, and they brought us again back. They said, now what are they going to do? They will separate us with the military personnel. Military will go and face the general court marshal, and we, the civilian, will be taken to the high court. And uh, we, the civilian, were given a Commonwealth Judge Court from Ghana. Do you remember the name of the judge? Yes, the name of the judge was Yebua. Justice Yebua. Yeah. And um, you mentioned that she was a Commonwealth judge. Exactly. And um, how did the trial go? What was the outcome? Yeah, the trial was very hectic. So many intermediations, so many irregularities happened during the trial. For one year, nine months, we have been going, coming, going, coming to court until the last day. When, the, no, during my, when I was put in the witness box to testify, I said to the judge, this statement was not my statement. The statement was written by Ismail Ajame and forced me to sign it. So then the judge said, now what are we going to do? We are going to have trial within trial to look into how tangible the cautionary and voluntary statement were. He believed there was no rule of law followed. We were tortured and cautionary and voluntary statement taken from us. And um, what happened um, after the trial within a trial? What was the determination? Yes. Yes, trial within a trial, we all confessed that we were seriously tortured, maltreated. Yes, statements were not voluntarily obtained. And they decided that there was no independent weakness. So all those things were said in the court. Then I particularly, I said to the judge, the statement, this one was not written by myself. It was written by Musa Jame. And this signature is not my signature. Just look at my documents. The signature is in my document and uh, that of the statements are not the same. As a result, my lawyer, lawyer Jobate, applied for a police uh, handwriting signature expert. I was taken to the police headquarters. There is one handwriting expert police officer then when I arrived, he said, now he give me a piece of paper. He said, I should write as many as I can. The lazy, the lazy frog jump over the dog, I don't know what and what. I should write 450 words. There he can determine whether this signature is mine. I did that. After two days, signatures was returned. To the court, the police officer said the signature was not mine. So my signature was thrown away. It was not admitted. And uh, my son also, I tender it as an evidence because du during the beating, there was so many stains of blood in my son. I said to the judge, this was due to torture. I saw in my hand also where they stabbed me with a knife. And uh, the judge we went during the trial within trial the church also admitted it as an evidence of torture so this is what saved me 
And um, at the end of the day, what happened to that statement that was challenged um, in the trial within a trial? What happened to it? It was thrown away. It was rejected by the judge. And your alleged um, confession was also not um, relied upon by the court. Is that correct? Exactly. What eventually happened to the charges that were preferred against you? Yes. What happened to the case eventually? Yes, what happened to the case after the end of the trial? Yeah, a verdict was done. I was acute and discharged. And other people were convicted and sentenced accordingly. So during my acute and discharge, I also was rearrested again and taken to prison again. Uh, Lieutenant Omar Kohli said they cannot leave me to go home until they give order from the, the big man, boss. Okay. Um, can you tell us who this big man or boss was? That is Yaya Jamin. So give order for me to be released or not. And who said that to you? That was 002 Kohli. Lieutenant Omar Kohli. No, 002 Kohli. Second, second, warrant officer 002 Kohli. Was he um, a prison officer or part of the military? No, he was part of the military, but the lesson officer between mile two and state house. So you are saying um, that after, after the trial and you were acquitted and discharged because you were found um, innocent, you were still taken back to mile two instead of being released to go home? Exactly. But can we go back a little bit? Because during my stay in mile two also, I encountered a very serious sickness due to the torture I have encountered also. Very well, Mr. Witness. You can yeah, do that. I was admitted for a period of six months in prison because of the torture I went through. I was eating throughout the day. I vomit a full bucket of blood, was taken to, pre to, the, to the hospital. The doctor refused to admit me saying that I am a security detainee, I should not be admitted there. I should be admitted at the prison in family center. So the Cuban doctor told them he's in a very critical situation. If you take him back to the prison, he might die there. Leave him here for 72 hours, we observe him and see. But it was never accepted. And when did these complications arise? Um, after, af, af, during what period did these complications this, arise? This was nearly before we complete our, before the end of our judgment. It was three months before judgment. That's, that's what delayed our, our court case because, you know, we were jointly charged and I was admitted in hospital. I cannot go on court. So the judge said, if I am absent, then he cannot prosecute the orders. We ha they have to wait. That's what delayed us there. And after your torture at the NIA, what symptoms um, did you exhibit? What happened to you after that? Yes, as, I, as we speak now, the, due to the torture I have experienced at the NIA, I am right now handicapped. All my kidneys are not working. They are not good. And uh, I need to go on a kidney transplant. Yes. Can you please just clarify that um, for us? Can you just give us further um, details about exactly what is wrong um, with your kidneys? Yes, the kidneys are malfunctioning and uh, they are at a very bad stage now, according to doctors here, that the only solution is for me to get a new kidney, otherwise, I can make it. So this is how we are now. Is there any connection between your kidneys, the state of your kidneys now, and the, suffer, um, and the torture that you suffered at the hands of the NIA? And if yes. so, tell us what. Yes, Council. I can fully remember during my torture, there was a kick Ismail Ajame gave me on my back. I definitely realized there is something happening because Automatically, I feel dizzy, 
and nervous. I don't know what's happening. Then two days after, I get sick and start vomiting blood. Yes, so I realized that he have done something internally in my body. And um, where were you eventually diagnosed? This started in Senegal when I went to Senegal. But Senegal don't diagnose me properly. They just said, you know, refugees, you always do these kind of things just to get papers that you are sick, you are that, you are this. All kind of uh, words I have been said there. Maybe I was looking for papers to go to Europe. I said, no, I think I am sick. Definitely, I was not like this. I was a very active man. Yes, yeah, so if I tell you I am sick, I am sick. I need a radio and know what is happening in my body. But they say no. So automatically when I, reset, when I was resettled in the Netherlands in 2008, June, uh, I went to the hospital and uh, they started monitoring me. And that's what, where they have seen that my kidneys have been damaged, tampered with. And you say that both kidneys um, Yeah, it's are two affected. of them. Two of them are affected, yeah. And what is the likelihood of getting a kidney donor? Yeah, hopefully, hopefully I have get a donor. My brother, my the same brother, the mother and father brother, uh, is willing to give me one. And the uh, arrangements are on the way. I think very soon he will come over. And right now, um, what is the state of your health? Now I am seriously sick. Very, very sick. Can you tell us what you're going through? Yes, I have to go to the hospital for dialysis. You know, your kidney, if they are not working, you go to the hospital, they drip blood from you. That's what you do otherwise. Uh, the kidneys, you, saw the, you know the responsibility of the kidney in the body. If they don't filter waste product, you cannot urinate, you cannot go to the toilet, you cannot do anything. That is the purpose of the kidney. So this now is lacking. So I have to go to hospital. They do everything for me there. And do you have any uh, medical documents uh, to prove this medical condition that you have mentioned? Yes, I did send them to the investigating team. We will follow and up. And I have a that. copy of them here. Very well, we'll follow up with that. Um, Mr. Witness, let's just uh, go back to after the trial. Um, you mentioned that um, they failed to release you and they were waiting for instructions from the president, uh, Yai Jame, to do so. So were you taken back to mile two? Yes, I was taken back to mile two. I spent mile two five days. Then, then the directress of mile two, then as Auntie Rose, she was the head of uh, the prison wing at uh, Joshua. She was transferred to central prison mile two to head the prison. She was going around on a familiarized station to meet me in my cell. And she said to me, what are you doing here? I said, I am released, but they have brought me back here. They said they have to get order from Oga for me to go home. She said to me, look, call your people and you pack your things, go home. Because I cannot keep you here without a warrant or a court order. If they want that, let them take you to the NIA, detain you there, or take you to a police station and detain you, but not in the prison here. This is how she released me. Please tell us um, who Oga is. You mentioned a particular Oga. Who is that? That is Yaya Jame, they mean. Yaya Jame was Oga. Okay. So you eventually released from prison? Exactly. I was released eventually. So Did I went go? in. So when I was released also, uh, personnel of the NIA and State House, some personnel came to me. They said they wanted to take me to Yaya Jame for me to go and apologize to Yaya Jame to tell him, anyway, this was just Satan. I am sorry. I will never do such a things again. I said to them, but then I have not done nothing. Why should I apologize? They say, no. Let's go. You do it. When you do it, he might reconsider you again for a position. I say, okay, now what are we going to do? I will go and contact my people. Then Monday, you people meet me at Kalinding, at Cow Johnson. 
like the Kunda at Carl Johnson, I will wait you there. Then we go together to Kanye Life. So inside the prison, Baba Job did tell me, honorable, don't accept their, 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 their what, they, what, what they told you. Because why? These people will take you up to the bus. They burn the car, you die there, and they pronounce that you have accident on the way when going to Kanye Life. Don't do it. I said, thank you very much, honorable. I will do what he said. Then immediately when I was released, I went into hiding. Yes. And when, where were you hiding, and um, did you remain in the Gambia after that? Yes, I was hiding in my sister-in-law compound. My wife, her sister, I was hiding in their compound in Bitik Yasin. Yes, they were looking for me around the provinces. They thought that I will be going to the provinces because I, you know, I'm from the provinces. But I never go. I just went into hiding. After five days in hiding, I decided one Saturday to go to Senegal. Please tell us who was looking for you and um, what happened when you um, went to Senegal. That is this jungulas. They just they were looking for me, wanted me to go to Yaya Jami and apologize. This was their mission, they said. And uh, I never agreed to that. This is why I ran away and went to Senegal to seek asylum. Did you eventually get um, asylum in Senegal? Yes. I did arrive in Senegal on the 14th of August with my sister-in-law, Jatubari. When we arrived, we went straight to the Red Cross Society in Senegal. We then, they refer us to the commissioner, the refugee, by, in, in, in Robos. They say, there you should go and file an asylum, not at the Red Cross. So we went to Robos, then we find them close and uh, now I have to find a place where I have to sleep. Yes, then we decided to go back to Charo Asir, where my sister also was, ma my sister-in-law was married. I went to, I decided to go to her and sleep there. Can you tell us whether you eventually um, got refugee status and whether you, you were given asylum? Yes, when I slept, at my sister's in law compound the following day, she said to me, Tomorrow you are going to the refugee center, but make sure that when going, you not don't go alone, go with delegation so that it will be so important to them. I said, Okay, so on, on our way going to the refugee center, as I passed by Ami Juf Cole, by then Ami Juf was in Senegal. He was working with the Media Foundation for West African Journalists. I also went with Demba Ali Jao, the then former Minister of Interior, sorry, Minister of Information. And uh, I went with Dr. Siga Jain. She was then heading the pro uh, and her and her husband. Yes, this is how we went there to the asylum center. Please confirm whether you got the refugee status um, in the end and you actually were granted asylum. Yes, at the end I was granted asylum in Senegal. I stayed there for some times. Then in 2008, when the Senegalese government was hosting the OIC, Musa Jamme tried to come in, sneak in and kidnap us. And uh, it never happened to me, but it happened to Yaya Damfa. Then when the news reached us, we all rushed to the DIC office in Senegal. DIC means they are NIA. We explained our experience with these people. Uh, DIC confirmed to the border police in Karan whether was there any officers who sneaked in Senegal last night. They said yes. It was Musa Jame and his, his team. But what they told us them was they are the advance party for the president because the president was supposed to come and attend the OIC meeting in Senegal. So that being the case, they have to come in advance and make preparation for the president. This is what happened. Um, can you just repeat the name you mentioned um, as being affected by these attempted kidnappings? That is Yaya Damfa. 
Yaya Danfa was a journalist working with the Amnesty International, and uh, they managed to locate Chief Ibrahim Amane when he was detained in Sarangai. Yaya Danfa was the one who leaked it to the people that he saw Chief Ibrahim Amane in Sarangai detained. So since that, the government don't find it very well with him. So what happened with uh, Yaya Damfa in particular? Just briefly, um, we are running out of time, unfortunately. But if you can just briefly tell us that, please. Yes, what happened to Yaya Damfa was then, then we all went to report to the UNHCR and tell them our audience with these people. From there, then they said, now, to, for you to stay here is not safe. What we're going to do, we are going to relocate you to a third country. So for me, I was brought to Netherlands with my family. And Yaya Damfa was taken to Sweden with his family. My question was, was he kidnapped? Yeah. No, 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 he was not kidnapped. When they attempted, he shouted. When he shouted, the whole area come out. Then these people boarded their car and right, went away. And how did they attempt to kidnap him? They came and were shouting his name. Yeah, 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 we have a person for you from the Gambia. You see? And who was this? Who was shouting his name that and was, who had come? That was Musa Jame and his team, gang of kidnappers. Okay. Finally, um, Mr. Witness, just tell me what impact. I mean, you've already, you know, covered that area partly about the impact um, on your health and on your life um, your experience you know has had but if you have anything to add um, on that kindly tell us before we wind down the hearing and um, I hand you over to the commissioners for questioning thank you very much madam council as you may know uh, in my family I was the breadwinner of the family and uh, it affected me both internal and external. And uh, my wife also, as you may know, she was working to help me. And during my arrest, she also went into hiding in the bush. I don't know where she was. It also affected my life and uh, my children's life. So it was definitely a terrible thing on me. Whenever I ask anybody about my wife's condition, they will say, we don't see her. So I was in a dilemma and uh, I have definitely suffered a lot, plus my this sickness. But thank God, all of a sudden, after one time, then I heard the voice of my wife was calling me from the United Kingdom. By then she was there. I said, thank God. I thought that you have been killed also. But she said, no, I managed to escape. I went through C4 area, to Casamas, Senegal, then I took a flight. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Witness. I will now hand you over to the commissioners for any questions they may have. And um, you will also, under, depending on the um, chairman, be given an opportunity to give um, your final words. Um, Mr. Chairman, may I hand over the witness to you for questioning? Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman uh, Council. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable them uh, for your testimony. Truly sorry on behalf of the Commission uh, the uh, difficulties you had to endure uh, in the hands of uh, uh, security uh, uh, agents of the Gambia. I have just one question, but before that actually wish you all the best in your endeavors um, to get kidney, tra uh, kidney transplant. I hope um, uh, everything goes well for you. Thank you so very, much, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, um, quick question. Uh, during your initial arrest and the detention, were there any efforts made in the House, in the National Assembly, to address your situation, your plight? Were there any efforts there that you know uh, of? No, Mr. Chairman, there was no effort made, no effort. In fact, they were so reluctant for me to communicate with them. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Carr, you have the floor, followed by 
uh, Bishop um, Adiko. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have two questions I want to ask. The first is, um, did your family know what happened to you? Because we've had testimony from previous witnesses who've told the commission that their families didn't know uh, what happened to them when they were detained. Did your family know what happened to you or when exactly you were detained? No, Mr. Commissioner. No family knows about my whereabouts because I was under communicado. You don't communicate with lawyer. You don't communicate with your family. So that was how things were. Thank you. The second question is, since you were elected by your constituents, what eventually happened to your, to your seat? Anyway, I, I term myself still the bona fide member of the National Assembly in my constituency because since my arrest and detention, I have never been expelled from the party. I have never been, there was no by-election conducted in my constituency. So I don't have anything, no papers to indicate that I have been fired or expelled from the party. So I don't know how things went, <laughs> but then this is where we are now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Bishop Odeko, you have the floor, followed by Commissioner Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Demba Dem, um, uh, since you, the torture had seriously affected your health. Um, how are you doing for survival in uh, the Netherlands? Thank you very much, Commissioner Bishop. Anyway, as you may know, in the West, when you were walking and you fall sick, still now you are paid because you get it during your working period. So that means I am still paid. Yeah, that's how I survive. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Jones, followed by Commissioner Bojang. Thank you, Chairman. Honorable Dem, um, I have a question. It's more of a clarification regarding the establishment or the creation of the junglers. Um, there was a bit of a sound issue, so I couldn't hear you properly. Um, but could you clarify, did you say that the National Assembly approved and gave license to the junglers to kill? Yes, thank you very much, Commissioner Jones. No, 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 what I was saying, this was the time when Musa Jame told me, don't run, if you run, they will kill you, because these people are launching to kill. I said in my mind, but then there was no bill came to the Assembly that I'm aware of, which say particular section of the army have been launching to kill. This is what was in my mind. This is what I was anticipating throughout. How can they kill? How they, can they be launching to kill? Okay, thank you for the clarification. Thank you, Commissioner Bojang. Have the floor, please. Thank you, Kiyama. Mr. Dem, you said you were hiding at your sister's compound at Bundu. How did you manage to escape from Dakar? Yes, very good question. My sister hired a taxi for me. Yes, then I was lying inside the taxi, not allowing nobody to see me. Then my sister was in front. Then everybody see her will assume that she hired a taxi. But then I was lying behind. This is how we managed to go out of the Gambia. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kinte. You have the floor. Honorable, um, I want some clarification here. You, you were saying both times that you were taken to NIA, it was at night. But when you're mentioning the time, you say 11 p.m., 1.30 p.m. Did you mean 1.30 a.m.? Yes, I think, I suppose that should be a.m., 1.30 a.m. Yeah, that was a mistake. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Kinte. Thank you very much, I'm, uh, Honorable Dem. If you have any final remarks to make, please proceed now. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for giving me the floor. I want to acknowledge the good work your this Honorable Commission is doing. 
and your team of experts uh, like the councillors Esa is doing a very good job Horeja, Mariyama and all the others definitely you are doing a very good job and our hope are on you I want to congratulate you for taking this responsibility and uh, I want to assure you that our support we are we will give you our hundred percent support and we will make sure that anything implemented or recommended by this commission will be implemented to the latter we will definitely make sure that we make a follow-up about the recommendation that you are going to give into the government because a type of caliber like you people i don't think that you will make any recommendation that will have effect on the people of the gambia especially dr lamin sise i also want to extend my condolence to the demands of your colleague kofi annan but still now we have our coffee, uh, our african coffee and that is you yourself the experience you have and the work you have done for mankind definitely we appreciate it that is the reason why today we are enjoying this human right we have here over western europe and uh, to the investigators i want to thank them particularly allergy they have done definitely a marvelous job and they are working in a very critical condition. So this all is patriotism. It's all towards having love for your country. So that being the case, I want to congratulate you so much. But allow me, Mr. Speaker, sorry, allow me, Mr. Chairman, to thanks also my wonderful wife. I have here a wonderful wife during the struggle we definitely experienced a lot of difficulties. And uh, in the interim, many grand soldiers have fallen down. And uh, may God accept their and grant them highest genital fidelity. Any day, any day you remember, there is a demonstration we organize. My wife will sit in the kitchen 24 hours cooking for the guests. And also Nafinjai, my sister. So these people, I cannot go without congratulating them. I want to congratulate also the Gambian journal, journalists for working in a very difficult condition. Even though it was difficult, people were not volunteer coming of volunteer information, but then they will try and all time feed us information. In the diaspora here, I want to congratulate my foot soldiers. These foot soldiers definitely enabled me to do my work, to do the struggle I was doing with Yaya Jame here very well. Anytime we apply an, a permit to conduct a demonstration or submit evidence at the International Criminal Court, we were welcomed and allowed. Yeah, in the absence of these people, definitely it would not have been possible. So we want to thank the entire legal team at the ICC and uh, our lawyers, plus our foot soldiers here who were behind me. I must mention their name, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Allow me, please, just one minute to mention their name. These were Mr. Silla Basamate, myself, Lamin Saddam Sanyan, Lamin Jaite, Abdullah Dabo, Basir Ndur, Mutar Jallo, and Lamin Baro, import and export. This make our struggle here very easy for us. Any support we need, definitely they will accord it to us. And also not forgetting Alaji Kijera. They all contributed to this, towards this struggle. So that being the case, I want to thank you so much. And uh, also thanking our able journalists here in the diaspora. I must mention Fander Mbai. He also definitely dedicated his whole life towards the struggle. Fander Mbai also is a part of the citizen. Thanking also the Fat Network Radio, the Gainakos, the Mafantas, and the Kebaros. These are all patriotic journalists who contribute immensely towards the struggle. Without these people, it would have been difficult for us. And not forgetting my sister also, Nita Faso, we were together in Senegal and she went to Mali. She also contributed immensely, definitely, towards the struggle. And uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I want to take a leave of you. Thank you so much.
Thank you very much indeed, Honorable Dem. Uh, and thank you also for the uh, kind words that are addressed to me personally. Um, we owe you an apology also for the uh, medical condition that you're in uh, to have a, a very late start, making you sit for hours and hours waiting for us to solve this technical problem that we have here. But we thank you enormously uh, for your kind and uh, very wise concluding uh, words and uh, wish you all the best. Council, uh, we will take a, a 30 minute break and uh, come back. Am I the next witness ready? Or yes, we? Mr. Chair, the next witness is ready. The next witness is ready and waiting. Fine. So can we take a 30 minute break? Is that okay? That, that, that is perfectly fine by all. Splendid. Thank you very much. Let's take it. Meeting is adjourned.